a place that was supposed to be inescapable, the impossible, breaking out of Alcatraz. It was a legendary escape from 55 years ago this month. Three men pulled off. Josh wandered through the eerie silent halls of this legendary penitentiary, once feared for its ruthless guards and infamous inmates. Established in 1934 on an isolated island, Alcatraz was nearly inescapable, cemented in history by the daring 1962 breakout involving makeshift rafts and decoy heads. But as Josh discovered, the prison's walls were not its only defense. It was a fortress of psychological warfare, spinning stories of deadly sharks and expert sharpshooters to crush any hope of escape. Yet, what chilling secrets did Josh Gates uncover within Alcatraz's dark, forgotten tunnels? Let's delve into why no one dares to step foot in these haunting passageways today. As Josh delves into these stories, with the guidance of a seasoned FBI agent, he uncovers the psychological tactics used by Alcatraz's administrators. The prison wasn't just a fortress of concrete and steel, it was also a stronghold of mental manipulation. Inmates were constantly fed falsehoods about the dangers lurking outside the prison walls. They were told that shark-infested waters surrounded the island, and that the guards were expert marksmen, prepared to shoot any escapee on sight, none of which was true. In reality, the cold waters and the distance to shore were the primary deterrents, serious, yet far less dramatic than the terrifying myths. These stories were deliberately spread by the prison staff, sowing seeds of doubt and fear to crush any thoughts of escape before they could take hold. The aim was to make escape seem not just physically impossible, but recklessly foolish. As Josh stands by the cells of the Anglin brothers, side by side, he is struck by the overwhelming sense of hopelessness that must have pervaded the minds of those planning to flee. Alcatraz's reputation as an impenetrable prison was built not only on its physical defenses, but on a carefully crafted narrative of fear and psychological control. This strategy of fear went beyond simply maintaining order. It was designed to make the inmates believe that any escape attempt was utterly futile. Tales of sharpshooting guards and shark-infested waters were part of a larger scheme to bolster the prison's impenetrable image, reinforcing the message that freedom was not only unattainable, but perilous. As Josh digs deeper into these accounts, he begins to see how the line between reality and the fear engineered by the prison authorities becomes increasingly blurred. What unfolds is a narrative that, while less sensational, serves as a powerful reminder that despair and manipulation could be just as confining as the physical bars and stone of Alcatraz itself. The physical obstacles to escaping Alcatraz were undeniably daunting. The island's isolation, the fortress-like architecture, and the natural defenses of the surrounding bay. Yet, the psychological barriers, carefully constructed from lies and half-truths by the prison administration, were just as formidable. Through these crafted narratives, Alcatraz cemented its reputation as an escape-proof fortress, not only in the minds of the prisoners, but in the public's perception as well. The blending of fact and fiction in Alcatraz's history reveals how control was maintained not just with locks and bars, but through fear and stories that confined the inmates just as tightly. Up next, discover how a former FBI agent interprets the infamous escapes from this legendary prison. For a former FBI agent, visiting Alcatraz offers unique insights into the notorious prison that once held America's most infamous criminals, including Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. Despite its ironclad reputation as an escape-proof fortress, the resolve of its prisoners to break free remained undiminished by the brutal conditions they faced. Over the years there were daring escape attempts, with all but one ending in either recapture or death for those involved. The most famous escape attempt from Alcatraz involved four determined inmates, Alan West, Frank Morris, and the Anglin brothers, John and Clarence. It was West who first stumbled upon a crucial oversight by the prison staff, while cleaning the prison roof, he discovered an unsecured ventilation duct that led directly outside. Recognizing the opportunity, he quickly shared this information with Morris, whose intelligence would soon prove essential. With an IQ of 133, Morris wasn't just another participant, he became the mastermind behind the plan. His strategic thinking transformed West's chance discovery into a carefully orchestrated escape plot. Morris brought the Anglin brothers into the scheme, capitalizing on their proximity to the critical area, which allowed for continuous communication and meticulous planning. 
Their escape plan was both audacious and deceptively simple. They would navigate the prison's internal passageways, originally designed for maintenance, to access the unguarded ventilation duct. These passageways, a labyrinth of decaying and corroded tunnels, revealed a critical vulnerability in Alcatraz's otherwise formidable security. The inmates intended to cut through the steel bars covering the duct, climb to the roof, and vanish into the night. What stands out about this plan is not only the sheer bravery of the inmates, but the glaring oversight by the prison authorities. One would expect a maximum security prison like Alcatraz to be impregnable, yet a single unsecured vent became a beacon of hope for those willing to risk everything for a chance at freedom. This oversight underscores a broader truth, the frequent underestimation of human creativity and perseverance. The planned escape wasn't just a physical attempt to break free, it was also a mental escape from the suffocating monotony and oppression of prison life. Every step along the meticulously plotted route offered a psychological reprieve as real as the physical distance they aimed to cross. The neglected passageways they navigated through, a decaying infrastructure, became a metaphor for their resilience in the face of overwhelming odds. This episode offers a poignant reflection on the human condition. The relentless pursuit of freedom even against seemingly insurmountable barriers. The Alcatraz escape story, stripped of its cinematic allure, invites us to examine more deeply what drives individuals to risk danger and near-certain failure in the quest for liberty. In essence, the tale of Alcatraz is far more than just a prison break. It's about human beings confronting both the physical and metaphorical walls that confine them. It challenges the idea that physical barriers can completely restrain human aspirations. Beyond the thrill of the escape itself, this story serves as a profound commentary on the lengths to which people will go to taste even the briefest moment of freedom. In this extraordinary account of an improbable escape, the characters didn't possess the sophisticated tools you might expect for such a daring feat. Instead, they relied on the simplest of instruments, ordinary spoons stolen from the cafeteria. Using these unassuming utensils, they meticulously chipped away at the steel bars covering their ventilation duct. Displaying remarkable ingenuity and patience over months of preparation, their resourcefulness extended beyond just the spoons. They crafted makeshift tools and even devised a way to create decoy heads from plaster, which they placed in their beds to deceive the guards during the escape. This level of creativity and determination highlights their resolve to break free from the relentless oppression of prison life. Each carefully planned step was not only a physical endeavor, but also a powerful act of defiance against a system designed to keep them confined. Ultimately, the story of Alcatraz resonates as a testament to the human spirit, showing that even the most basic tools, when wielded with ingenuity and determination, can challenge the most formidable barriers. With these spoons, they methodically chipped away at the prison walls, each tiny bit of progress representing a small step toward freedom. It was a painstakingly slow and often frustrating process. Night after night, each prisoner scraped away in his cell, the quiet scratching of spoon against stone echoing in the stillness. They developed a rhythm, working in the shadows, careful to mask their efforts from the ever-watchful guards. The sound became a subtle symphony of determination, each scrape a reminder of their resolve. The men shared whispered encouragement their camaraderie strengthening as they envisioned the freedom that lay beyond the cold, unforgiving walls. As they dug deeper, they transformed their cells from mere confinement into a covert workspace. Each inch gained heightening their anticipation. The quiet determination of these inmates became a powerful act of rebellion, a testament to the unyielding human spirit. Join them now as they dig quietly toward freedom, fueled by hope and the unrelenting desire to escape the clutches of Alcatraz. These men primarily worked during noisy times, such as when other prisoners played music at night. The cacophony masked the sounds of their digging, allowing them to labor in relative secrecy. They also capitalized on the regular maintenance work occurring within the prison, using the additional clatter as cover to dig more aggressively. Each scrape of their spoons was fraught with risk, demanding constant vigilance to ensure no guard caught on to their activities. One of them always stood watch, alert and ready to warn the others if a guard approached. Despite the high security at Alcatraz, where guards were plentiful, about 80 inmates were aware of the escape plan. Remarkably, 
They all kept quiet, united by a strong sense of community and a silent agreement to support each other's efforts. This wasn't merely about breaking out. It was a collective act of defiance against the oppressive atmosphere of the prison. Months of relentless effort gradually widened the holes in their cell walls, each inch a testament to their determination. As they chipped away, they not only envisioned the taste of freedom, but also forged deep bonds with one another, reinforcing their resolve to escape together. In the shadows of Alcatraz, a spirit of solidarity blossomed, illuminating their path toward liberation. To conceal the holes in their cell walls, the prisoners tapped into their creativity. They crafted fake wall panels from cardboard in the prison workshop, carefully painting them to match the surrounding concrete perfectly. Additionally, they cleverly arranged their personal items, musical instruments, clothes, and other belongings to obstruct any view of their ongoing escape efforts. However, getting out of their cells was just the first hurdle. The real challenge lay in leaving the island itself. Inspired by a magazine article, they devised a plan to construct a boat using raincoats, which were readily available within the prison. While this might seem like a desperate measure, it also demonstrated how desperation can breed innovative solutions. Secretly, they gathered and stitched together over 50 raincoats, transforming them into a makeshift boat and life jackets. Each raincoat was carefully joined, creating a vessel that they hoped would be buoyant enough to carry them across the treacherous waters surrounding Alcatraz. This audacious plan was a testament to their resourcefulness and determination as they prepared to risk everything for a chance at freedom. This escape plan is remarkable not only for its creativity, but also for its meticulous execution under extreme conditions. The prisoners had to exercise incredible caution and patience, leveraging every available opportunity without drawing attention to themselves. Their tools were simple, spoons and raincoats, but their plan was intricately complex, requiring not just physical labor, but also a psychological strategy. They focused on keeping morale high, fostering solidarity among one another, and managing the constant fear of getting caught. Through this story, we witness how human ingenuity can flourish in the face of adversity. These men were locked away, surrounded by the unforgiving sea, yet they resolutely refused to accept their confinement. They transformed their limitations into instruments of liberation, demonstrating that even the most ordinary objects can become keys that unlock the gates to freedom. The only available space for their escape lay on the roof of their cells, exactly where Alan West had discovered the entrance to the ventilation duct. Though guards frequently monitored this area, keeping a close watch on the prisoners, it was here, under Morris's shrewd guidance, that West devised a clever plan. By capitalizing on the limited visibility during moments of distraction, they aimed to make their final push toward freedom. Daring to believe that the culmination of their hard work and creativity could lead them to a new life beyond Alcatraz. With a cunning that seemed almost remarkable for prisoners, West managed to persuade the guards that the bars on their cell needed to be covered with blankets and sheets to prevent dust from falling in during cleaning. This simple yet ingenious trick not only secured the guards' approval, but also cleverly concealed their burgeoning workshop from view. From their vantage point, the prisoners accessed a utility corridor and transformed it into a secret workspace. Concealed beneath a tarp, this makeshift area provided the cover they needed to construct a rubber boat and life jackets, critical components for their escape. By persistently raising concerns about the dust issue, they effectively rendered their workshop invisible to anyone simply passing by. This oversight by the prison staff was not a mere slip-up. It exposed a significant gap in the security of a facility renowned for being escape-proof. The prisoners capitalized on this vulnerability outsmarting the very system designed to keep them confined. As they continued their preparations, the tension mounted, blending hope with the thrill of outwitting their captors. Let's watch as these resourceful inmates navigate the challenges of Alcatraz, cleverly maneuvering through the cracks in its high security. Despite the gravity of this security breach, it didn't come to light until two decades later, in 1990, highlighting the scandal's far-reaching implications. For two months, the inmates took turns laboring in their makeshift workshop, crafting escape tools and cutting through the rods on the ventilation duct. The time spent away from their cells posed a significant risk, particularly with guards potentially making surprise checks. Their solution to this peril was as clever as it was audacious. 
they fashioned realistic decoy heads from plaster and other materials, expertly designed to deceive the guards into believing they were asleep during nighttime inspections. This ingenious ruse allowed them to continue their preparations undetected, further demonstrating their resourcefulness and determination. As the days passed, the inmates felt the thrill of nearing their goal, even as the stakes grew higher with each passing moment. These decoy heads were truly remarkable creations, crafted from soap, cement dust, toilet paper, paste and dyes, materials the inmates could scrounge in their restricted environment. The hair, essential for achieving a lifelike appearance, was ingeniously sourced by Clarence Anglin, who worked in the prison barbershop. He discreetly collected real hair from fellow inmates without their knowledge, ensuring their ruse would be even more convincing. The night of June 11, 1962, marked the culmination of all their meticulous planning. As the prison lights were extinguished at 9.30 p.m., each man carefully placed a fake head on their pillow, draped it with a blanket, and quietly maneuvered toward the back corridor of their cells. Heartbeats quickened as they prepared to make their daring move, fully aware that this was the moment they had been working toward for so long. Every detail had been considered, every risk calculated. Now it was time to put their plan into action and take their chances at freedom. This led them to their secret workshop and the path to the ventilation duct that would take them to freedom. However, things didn't go smoothly for everyone. Alan West found himself in a precarious situation. The cement he had used to conceal his efforts had set hard, and he struggled to break through. His companions, Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, urged him to hurry and follow if he managed to free himself, but time was of the essence. As they reached the prison roof, they prepared the rubber boat and life jackets, carefully removing the steel rods that blocked their path. Meanwhile, West remained trapped hindered by the very cement intended to aid their quiet escape, the others pushed forward adhering strictly to their rule, keep going no matter what. They slipped through the prison's defenses, silently cutting through fences and making their way to the shore under the cover of darkness. Each step brought them closer to freedom, even as they felt the weight of their companion's absence. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, they navigated the treacherous terrain, driven by the hope of a new life beyond the walls of Alcatraz. There, Morris employed a specially modified device to quietly fill their boat with air. By dawn, as the prison wake-up bell rang and guards discovered the dummy in Morris's cell, a frantic search ensued. Alan West, still trapped and unable to escape, was the first to be interrogated. Although he feigned cooperation, suspicions arose that he was withholding information about the escape plan. Despite a massive manhunt conducted by the authorities and the FBI, no signs of the escapees were found, indicating they had likely made it to the bay. The absence of any evidence or leads fueled speculation about their fate, with many believing they had successfully navigated the waters to freedom. As the sun rose over Alcatraz, the prison's air was thick with tension, but for Morris and the Anglin brothers, the horizon symbolized hope and new beginnings. The prison, once deemed escape-proof, saw its reputation significantly tarnished by the audacity of its inmates. The search for them evolved into one of the most extensive operations the FBI had ever undertaken. However, no other prisoners were willing to divulge any details that could shed light on the escapee's fate, leaving the event shrouded in mystery and relegated to the archives as a vivid reminder of the lengths people will go to attain freedom. As questions lingered, did they survive the treacherous waters? Did they find refuge on the mainland? the legend of the escapees grew. The tale became a focal point for speculation and intrigue, sparking theories and stories that captured the public's imagination. Let's delve into the possibilities surrounding what might have really happened to Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, examining the clues left behind and the enduring legacy of their daring escape. Despite thorough investigations and 15 years of FBI scrutiny, the fate of the three Alcatraz escapees remains shrouded in uncertainty. Officially, it's believed they drowned in the treacherous waters off the coast, yet this conclusion feels incomplete given the evidence recovered. Among the items found were bags containing personal belongings, photographs and letters, suggesting these were cherished mementos. This raises important questions. Would they truly abandon such significant items in a life-threatening situation, or could their loss indicate a different narrative? Josh's experience touring Alcatraz adds another layer of intrigue to this unresolved case. 
He begins at the cell of Frank Morris and makes his way through the block where the Anglin brothers were housed. The considerable distance between their cells makes it difficult to fathom how they communicated and orchestrated such a complex escape plan under the watchful eyes of guards. As Josh contemplates the ingenuity and determination that fueled their escape, he can't help but wonder about the hidden connections and strategies that allowed them to collaborate despite the prison's stringent conditions. His tour includes a stay in an actual cell and a walk along the presumed escape route, providing a stark sense of the experiences and challenges faced by the escapees. The journey offers a tangible connection to their desperate quest for freedom, allowing him to visualize the obstacles they overcame. Throughout the tour, various artifacts used by the inmates are showcased, highlighting their incredible resourcefulness. The prison library, with its old issues of popular mechanics, unexpectedly served as a crucial resource, providing the knowledge needed to devise their escape tools. Among the ingenious creations was a fake vent grate, skillfully crafted from everyday materials like cardboard, soap, and paint, designed to blend seamlessly with the surrounding walls and conceal their escape activities. As Josh reflects on the creativity and determination required for such an audacious plan, he gains a deeper appreciation for the lengths these men were willing to go to in their pursuit of freedom and he contemplates the possibility that their story might not have ended as tragically as officially believed. The inmates painstakingly chipped away at the concrete surrounding their cells using simple tools like spoons and makeshift chisels. Their resourcefulness extended even further. They crafted a periscope from scrap materials, complete with a small mirror, allowing them to discreetly check for guards without exposing themselves. This remarkable level of ingenuity is further exemplified by how they repurposed a vacuum cleaner motor into a drill, showcasing their ability to creatively solve problems with whatever materials they could find. Each inventive solution reflected their determination and resilience, transforming ordinary objects into vital tools for their escape. As Josh learns about these clever adaptations, he can't help but admire the escapee's relentless pursuit of freedom against all odds. The highlight of Josh's visit is the discovery of the replica heads used by the inmates. These meticulously crafted heads, placed in their beds, were designed to deceive the guards while the men worked on their escape during the night. Surprisingly realistic, the heads reflect the inmates' dedication to detail and their determination to execute their plan flawlessly. Intriguingly, four heads are displayed, despite only three inmates successfully escaping hinting at an initial plan that may have included a fourth participant who ultimately did not make it. As Josh explores the exhibits, filled with first-hand insights into the constraints and ingenuity within the prison walls, a vivid picture emerges of a place where the ultimate constraint of freedom ignited extraordinary creativity and resolve. Despite the high security measures in place, the inmates demonstrated remarkable cunning, exploiting weaknesses in the system to orchestrate their daring escape. This narrative of resilience against overwhelming odds serves as a testament to the human spirit's unwavering quest for freedom. Their story, filled with clever tricks and meticulous planning, captivates and stirs curiosity. Without definitive proof of their fate, the narrative of their escape remains tantalizingly open-ended, fueling ongoing discussion and speculation. The intricacies of their elaborate escape plan combined with the mystery of their final whereabouts, invite contemplation about the limits of human ingenuity and perseverance. What do you think really happened to the escapees? Did they successfully navigate the treacherous waters and start anew? Or did the harsh conditions claim them? Share your theories below, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more intriguing discussions.